Hello guys, today we will be talking about What if Naruto sent back in time by Shingami part 2 If you enjoy this video please like and subscribe Now let's begin Well, can't say I didn't see this coming These were Naruto's next words Accidentally spoken aloud as the clan carted away the charred corpse that had once belonged to the great Now very late Uchiha Fugaku and even if he was somehow wrong if by some miracle the pile of smoking flesh wasn't a corpse, the man would likely never be a shinobi again. The Gokumekaku had done massive damage not just to the clearing but to the buffoon's body, the arrogant Uchiha had been left sporting massive third degree burns, one of his hands had all but burned to ash in the massive explosion. Not that he fight sorry for him, mind you. Far from it. He was simply in awe of his own power. It was hard to believe that a single fire technique, even one of Madara's had done such a good job at wiping that smug smile of that prick's face. If Gurama was still with him, he was certain the old fox would be laughing all nine of his tails off. Even now, fire crews were still working to put out the blaze with water, those few who had remained of the Uchiha gazed upon him with varying emotions of respect, awe, and in some cases even fear. As much as he might loathe to admit it, he'd just established a respected place for himself and the clan. And quite possibly changed the future. As he tried to contain his trepidation at continuously changing the future, Makoto sidled up to him, appearing visibly pleased with the end result. Well done. She said, indicating the charred terrain within a glance. I wasn't aware you knew such an excellent technique, as expected of Madara's descendant. Her finger trailed across his cheek before he could think to stop it, tracing thin lines across his cheek where his whiskers once dwelt and pulling his face towards her own. You know. When next she spoke, her lips brushed his outer ear, words warmer than her breath. I do believe I'm starting to fall for you more and more, Naruto-kun. She took him by the arm and began to lead him away from the others, deeper into the grounds. Odd. So how did it feel? obliterating him a single move. She asked at length. Don't lie, I saw your face back there, you enjoyed it. The former Uzumaki opened his mouth to say reply, and promptly snapped it shut as she stepped away, awaiting his reply. See you you're, alright, Naruto, just roll with it. It was easy. He feigned a small smile in typical Uchiha arrogance, after all those years spent around Sasuke, it wasn't that hard. The fool wasn't even worthy of facing me. Truth be told, it was the great destroyer of flame was the only fire jutsu that held any sort of real significance to him, Madara had used it to nearly wipe out the shinobi alliance multiple times during the war it was only fitting that he use it for the use it toward the greater good to end their duel swiftly. He felt a brief pang of sorrow, suddenly realizing he just might have ended Itachi's existence before it had ever begun. But that, was what this was about now wasn't it? He was here to change this. Some of those changes might not be pleasant. And some of them might. The voice didn't belong to Kurama he realized it was his own subconscious, a whisper of desire as he glanced at the woman beside him, refusing to be denied. There was certainly something alluring about Uchiha Mikoto, she was bold, beautiful, and if her lips on his ear and her words were any suggestion, she, was obviously attracted to him. He was no stranger to the female form, but what to do? Decisions, decisions. The old man had informed him that he wouldn't be able to accept missions for at least a week while he was instated as a citizen of Konoha. And it wasn't as though he'd be able to change anything just by sitting on his hands until such a time, so. Which reminds me, Naruto-kun. I have a favor to ask. You, want to fight me? Naruto cocked his head aside as Makoto finished her explanation, restraining a pained grimace as his raven locks threatened to blot out his vision once again. Kami alive, but he wasn't used to have this much hair. He'd have to cut it soon perhaps into his old hairstyle? Maintaining it in its present form was absolutely of out the question, eerie resemblance to Uchiha Madara aside. He didn't necessarily enjoy being reminded of those old memories, the images of the madman cutting his friends and family down were still too fresh to endure. MMM. Makoto nodded, mistaking his silence for affirmation. Just a simple spar. No Ninutsu, or Genjutsu. Only our Sharingan. 
Perhaps some kunai. I wish to see how your skill compares to mine. Once more, the time-traveling shinobi had to pause to consider the ramifications of his actions. Something about the way she'd said Spar set off alarm bells in his head surely she couldn't be serious? After seeing what he'd done to Fugaku she wanted to face him herself? Granted. She replied, raising her arms and settling into a stance. You don't strike me as the type to hurt someone without cause, I like that. So, why don't we sweeten the deal? That caught Naruto flat-footed, once again, and for the first time since meeting with Hiruzen here in the past, he was truly at a loss for words. I, beg your pardon? Makoto's smile sent shivers down his spine. Say, if I win, you'll spend the remainder of the day with me, you'll spend the night in my quarters and do whatever I ask until sunrise. Oi, oi, oi. And if I win? The heiress's grin seemed to falter for an instant, as though she hadn't considered the possibility of her defeat. Then I'll be yours to do with as you please for the evening. Just like that? Naruto's deadpan was barely concealed. He didn't believe her for an instant, but something inside him stirred at the challenge. If I didn't know better, I'd say you're trying to get me in bed? Figure that out on your own, did you? Look, we barely even know each other what's to know? Mikoto countered, folding both arms before her not insubstantial bosom. I find you attractive. Don't you feel the same? It has nothing to do with whether you're related to Madara or not, I could care less about that. However what I do care about is your strength. You proved your power against Fugaku back there you're obviously more than a match for most of our clan, I dare say you'd even best my father and he's the clan head. As his heir, I wish to see your true capabilities firsthand for myself you do understand that, I trust? Yes, Naruto chose his words carefully, but I still fail to see why you want me so badly. In the face of his silence, she smiled. It seems forward. I know, but I have always known what I've wanted in life, ever since I was a little girl. Someone strong. A man who doesn't piss or preen over tradition. Someone willing to stand up for himself and what he believes in. She turned aside then, her eyes downcast. Until you came along, I was beginning to lose hope, I'd never thought I would find someone like that. Unfortunately for you, and here she did raise her gaze eyes bright and determined. You've come into my life at the worst possible time and done exactly what I had hoped to do turn my entire clan on his head. I expect you to take responsibility for what you've done. And then, just as swiftly as her Sharingan had shown itself, so to did it fade, those charcoal orbs unexpectedly softening. Do you not find me attractive? She asked, tucking an arm around her waist whilst she spoke. As a fellow Uchiha. Oh dear God, she's adorable. Naruto felt a trickle of blood trickle down his nose and promptly slapped himself. Just who the hell was he staring at here? Itachi's mom, Itachi's mom, Itachi's mom. I have to calm down before I go and do something stupid. And yet, his mind was screaming at him, telling him that this was the woman responsible for giving birth to Itachi and Sasuke. By all rights they might not exist now after what he'd done to Fugaku. But a small part of him cried foul at the thought of eradicating Itachi from existence. He tried to shut down all thoughts of mutual attraction from his mind, but to no avail. They clung like a stain to his brain, resisting all attempts to be scrubbed off and clean. And as such, he wasn't quite ruined the next words that emerged from his mouth, well, you're certainly not unattractive. Jet. These Uchiha really spoke their minds, didn't they? She wasn't anything like Itachi or Sasuke. Nothing at all. He didn't remember either of them being like, well, this. He was swiftly losing himself, Naruto was, and their spar had yet to even begin. Well, when you put it that way begin. She dove at him, her body a light blur, ebony tresses streaming out behind her as she threw the first punch. His new eyes saw it coming a mile away. What they didn't see was her hand emerging from the pouch at her back the blow had been a feint. Naruto's head snapped to the right, his mouth snapping shut with a harsh click as something screamed towards his face at breakneck speed. He felt something catch between his teeth and only then did he realize, he'd caught a kunai between his teeth. Makoto gave him no time to try and process his small victory however, 
her hand scything towards his neck in a devastating arc that, if successful, would surely leave an awful bruise if it connected. He'd learned since a young age to underestimate the strength of a new Chiha, certainly not one in her prime. With a hiss his head arched backward, taking the kunai between his teeth and shooting snarls back at her with the sheer force of his tongue alone. A thin slice opened upon the older Uchiha's cheek, earning him the briefest of surprised his hand snared her wrist in a vixious vice, biting down with enough force to shatter bone. This same technique had broken Zunade's wrist hours before. Makoto didn't even flinch. Naruto saw it then the chakra circling in her veins, strengthening her body, granting her resilience momentarily surpassing his own strength. Not bad. She conceded. But. But? He challenged. But I can do better. Makoto scissored her legs beneath him, depriving both of their balance. The Uzumaki turned to Chiha had a heartbeat to realize just how much he was beginning to enjoy their little spar before that old instinct of his kicked in, sending his new body wireling into action. Sharingan eyes flared, he saw her heel come sweeping towards him an instant before Makoto began the motion. In the blink of an eye, he launched himself upright, planting his knee into her stomach. He braced himself then, readying for the counterattack, that never came. Makoto crumpled like a sack of potatoes, her body flopping like a wet noodle to the ground. Oh crap. He'd underestimated his strength. Just what kind of awful power dwelt in this new body of his, to fell someone with a single blow? Stooping to a knee, he began to check for a pulse, silently fearing the worse. He hadn't killed her, had he? A harsh cough from Makoto swiftly disabused him of such a notion. She was still breathing though stunned by the blow to her stomach all the same. Sorry. Naruto murmured. Guess I don't know my own strength. Impressive. She gasped up at him. Your strength exceeds everything I thought it would be. Truly? As promised, I know. W what? I said no. Naruto felt he might be making the biggest blunder of his life, but still, he shook his head. Don't force yourself for the sake of your clan. I, detest that. More than anything, he hated it when people were lying to themselves. He wanted no part of this if the heiress didn't truly want him. And for a moment, he thought he'd been right. Makoto stared up at him for a long moment her dark eyes disbelieving, her expression torn somewhere between anger and amused ire, as though she found this whole speech of his incredibly funny. A joke, even. Then she straightened albeit with some effort refusing all attempts at assistance. Whoever said I was forcing anything, fool? Her hands closed around his visage and drew him forward, their faces now centimeters apart. I wasn't lying when I said I wanted you. Huh? Mikoto looked like she was going to say something else, but she didn't. Instead she smiled, leaned up, and kissed him. Naruto shivered, a small tremor of desire arcing up his spine. But desire wasn't enough to hold him to Makoto no matter how much lust he might feel in that regard. It took a great deal of effort to break away but he did just that, gasping slightly. We can't do this. He argued as she tugged him out of the sunlight and into the trees, but the words were without rancor. Oh, I think we can. She reached up, trailing her finger through his hair, stroking his scalp through the sea of ebony tresses. In fact we're going to. Right here. Right now. There was just something about the way she said those words that stripped away his self-control. Gazing down at her, her eyes half-lidded, her fingers exploring every inch of him told Naruto all he needed to know. He'd been wrong. Makoto wasn't being forced into anything, she was doing this there was absolutely nothing H flitting across his frame no, you don't understand he was cut off as her mouth struck his. Her lips connecting with his ferociously her tongue probing against his. That did it. The last bastion of his self-control crumbled. You're sending me where? I've already explained this twice to you, Naruto. Sarutobi's deadpan was barely concealed. Do you honestly expect a third? Yeah, because it'd make me feel all warm and cozy inside. Naruto's deadpan was barely concealed. Endeared though he might have been with the Sandame during his youth it was a man, not a boy who gazed upon the third now, through eyes unfettered by admiration and endearment. For as long as he could remember he'd wanted decisions that no man should have to break. Some broke under the pressure. 
others bowed to it and let it pass them by. And still others bore up under the weight of that horrible burden, carrying it stoically all those days. Oh wear that hat, sit in that seat. Losing the war had changed that. There were burdens with being in command, impossible to this day. He still wasn't entirely sure which of those three Sarutobi Hyaruzen had turned out to be. Granted, he understood exactly what the privileges, responsibilities of the office entailed, including authoritative process and quite frankly, thought his first and possibly last assignment was complete bullshit. To send a newly integrated shinobi out into the field so soon was just asking for trouble. Especially if that ninja was a Nuchi who still galled him to say that. Supposedly descended from Madara himself. Very well. But this is the last time. Whatever you say, Hokage-sama. God it was so weird to say that. The Sen Dame sighed, the sound of a leader rolled and worn. And yet he seemed oddly relaxed. Peaceful, even. Naruto couldn't tell, he'd never been good at reading the old man's moods when he was younger. Even with all these years of experience behind him, he still couldn't tell whether the old man he would always be seen that way in his eyes was pleased or pissed with him. Hell, that expression of his remained entirely the same as that day, the day he'd been slain. Naruto nearly blanked up right then and there, dear Kami alive, how was he going to prevent that? Granted the time of Hyruzen's death would not be for many, many years till now but just the thought itself was enough to give him chills. That's right, he mused, Abito and Madara aren't the only threats here. I've got to worry about him as well. What a pain. If left unchecked, Orochimaru would leave the village and torment thousands of innocent souls. Not to mention all those he would kill, I won't let that happen, either. He reminded himself, forcibly resting his mind back to the present as the Hokage finished his explanation, in short, you will be part of a joint envoy to Sunagakure. Hyruzen explained for the third and final time. They've recently sighted Iwagakure scouts on their borders and tensions are high throughout the nation. As they are one of our only allies at present, I cannot stress the importance of this. They lack our military might, but many talented shinobi have recently come under their banner. He fixed Naruto with a pointed gaze, leaving the blonde wondering just what he'd meant by that. Is he implying I'd be better off there? What? Naruto blinked. Ara, it's nothing. Sarutobi waved his question away with his hand. I just it difficult to reconcile your actions with that of your ancestors given the, resemblance. Ah, so that's what it was. Wait, that was the absolute last thing he wanted. As things stood, I have got to get this cut. The black hit ground, touching a hand to his spiky mane. I don't want anyone comparing me to him. And why not? Because I'm my own man. The Uchiha found himself glowering in more ways than one as he lowered his arm. I don't want to share the present with some bloody ancestor. Well said. Now, as I was saying, you'll be departing tomorrow at daybreak for the sake of renewing our truce this time, Naruto couldn't quite hold back his groan. Is there a problem? Need I remind you that I've only been here for two days? His voice held just a hint hoping to do some recon on the village maybe ingratiate himself with the clans, possibly even improve his social standing, the better with which to guide future events. Being sent out as an envoy to another village wasn't exactly part of the plan. It certainly didn't help that he knew next to nothing about Sunagakure, save that Gara, and by definition, his mother and father, hailed from there. Wasn't her name Korra, or something? He quietly filled that away for later use before speaking again, exasperation when he spoke, a note of annoyance at his careful plan so callously disrupted. 3, if you count today. And here he'd been I thought I'd have at least a week to acclimate till you started sending me on missions, or something important. You've generated a lot of interest in the other nations. Hyruzen replied, steepling his fingers. As much as I would have liked to give you some time, I'm afraid that's no longer an option. Besides, and here the Sen Dame did smile, you're still wearing that old Hishiate, are you not? Naruto blanched, in all the chaos of his arrival, he simply hadn't bothered to remove the damn thing. Sentimental value and what not. Why you have me there? Precisely. The not quite old man answered, his grey gaze gravitating towards Naruto once more. 
as Sunagakura is our ally, I saw no reason to refuse their request. Unless you have a problem? Inwardly, Naruto blanched. Well, this certainly threw a wrench in his plans. But he couldn't object without sounding foolish, and he'd already resolved not to reveal that he was from the future. To say so now would ruin what little credibility he had already established within the village, not to mention Anna with him in irons. They'd think he was a crazy man. And with the false memories of the Shinigami overlaying his own, there was no way for him to convince them otherwise. No choice but to bite the bullet on this one. No, I can't say that I do. Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose. I take it you're going to assign me an escort? My pupils will escort you. Yes. Sartobi replied. This is an A-ranked mission, Naruto. As much as I might like to, I can't simply send you alone. He made no mention of the turmoil his obliteration of Fugaku had done to the village, they both knew that a message had been delivered, albeit unintentionally. To stand against Madara's descendant was to court death or worse. It wasn't certain if the man would ever wake from the coma the medics had found him in. For all intensive purposes the man's might might just be gone. So it's gonna be just me and the Sinan, palling around in the desert? Came the reply. Fuyuyuan. Naruto. The reborn Ichihu stopped short, humor falling to the wayside when heard that tone. The tone? It was the same one the old man had used to discipline him when he was six years old. Whatever he was about to say, it was completely, utterly serious. I suspect you already know this yourself but I'll should have you know that we are at war amongst the other major villages. Assassinations, power changing hands, that sort of thing is commonplace in this day and era. Sarutobi warned, his voice dreadfully soft. Iwa, Kumo, Kiri, amongst others. I would greatly appreciate your discretion in this matter. Although it seemed but a trifling task for one such as yourself, I needn't remind you that the probability of encountering resistance is quite high afraid i'm going to burn a few bodies unless you've business with the clan heiress hyrus encountered silently naruto frows sarutobi knew he didn't know how but somehow the old man knew he knew he'd managed to land himself in trouble already it didn't have anything to with his afternoon tryst with the makoto thank kemi save the sand dame and his crystal ball damn ball the two of them had managed to avoid detection, despite having blatant sex in the middle of the afternoon in an unguarded training ground no less. The Uchiha heiress had bid him adieu with a not-so-subtle promise to see him later. Thus, here he found himself, dancing on a razor's edge. To deny it would make him look bad in the eyes of the Uchiha not to mention Makoto herself, whom he rather fancied and likely eliminate the one ally he'd already gained. Preventing that massive massacre was high on his to-do list, enough to make the former blonde swallow his pride and relinquish the fact. How? It was not a question. I have my ways. Sarutobi's smile was that of a proud parent, once more Naruto was reminded that the old man considered much of Konoha to be his family. At Naruto's thunderous expression he was swift to raise his hands in deference. Make no mistake, I approve. It is good that you were able to integrate into your clan so, seamlessly. Naruto anger dissolved when he saw that amused expression, replaced by shock. The old fart had actually seen it happen. And try as he might, he simply couldn't bring himself to be angry about it. In doing so, Sartobi literally had him over a barrel. That, ingenious bastard. A knock on the door interrupted his self-inflicted musings. Yes, come in. Sartobi waved. Once more Naruto found himself stricken speechless by the trio that emerged. Tsunade he'd already seen, so her reappearance wasn't nearly as striking as before. But Teres, not a pace behind her. Urosenin. He was a bit younger, without the lines in his face, but it was definitely, him. He was alive. Almost every fiber of Naruto's being longed to leap across the room and gloom his sensei in a strong hug. That desire only intensified when Jiraiya grinned that cocky grin of his and spoke. You called for us, old man? I'm not that old. Sarutobi's reaction had Naruto snickering, but his amusement was admittedly short-lived. Because there was one other whom he'd failed to account for. One who a sharp spike of anger, fear through the warm fog of nostalgic euphoria that had enveloped him. 
as swiftly made himself known, that oily slippery old voice sending is this him, sensei? Yes, this is the young man I spoke to you about, interesting. The Uchiha's Sharingan activated almost on their own and he simultaneously fought down the urge to hiss as that golden gaze fell upon him. There he was. Naruto felt the cold chill shoot down his spine at the sight of Orochimaru, nearly grimacing as Sinan's pale, composed visage. Orochimaru had been somewhat ambivalent toward by the time war reached its climax they'd even worked together once or twice but he trusted the slippery snake about as far as he could throw game Abunta which was about a foot or two. The man might not be evil yet might but that didn't make him any less dangerous. If anything, he was even more of a threat. Their brief alliance against Tabito and Madara hadn't gone altogether well, ending with the Sinan's eventual death, and Naruto's force use of the Shinigami seal on Madara. Now here he was, starting now that he was an Uchiha he no doubt whatsoever that the man would try and go after his eyes. Kukukuku, why so serious? Orochimaru asked, laughing genially at sight of the Sharingan and killer intent. I mean you know harm. Lie lies lies lies. Murderer. Betrayer. Oathbreaker. Naruto's left eye twitched, dangerously close to ending the man with one of his newly acquired techniques. It would be so oh oh easy. Madara's eyes had revealed to him a great many jutsu, it made his owner Asengan end. Raisin Shrike and Variants a tiny drop in a very large ocean. An ocean he could now peer into at any time and summon forth almost any jutsu he wished. He could drown the man in water, bury him in mud, chaw his body to cinders, or even suffocate the air from his very lungs. And those were just the elemental ones. Of course, any such aggression so would result in an immediate attack from the three shinobi in the room, but still. I need to find a way to get rid of this guy without anyone noticing. An idea occurred to him just then. Orochimaru would be suffering the very unfortunate accident a few days from now. But until then, he would play nice. Sorry, he cracked, but I don't like guys. He had the sweet, sweet satisfaction of watching the man's pale visage turn ghost white. Tsunade frowned at this light, opened her mouth to speak oh, calm down, grandma. Naruto waved her wrath away at a glance, quietly cursing himself for the slip-up. Let your boyfriend over there fight his own battles. Now, two-thirds of the Sanin were paler than bone itself. WWWY you little? We are not involved. At all. Bah ha 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 ha. Jiraiya's mad cackle lopped the legs off her reprimand with singular ease, the white head all but beside himself with laughter. Oh, that was a good one. I like this guy. He readily extended an arm toward Naruto, offering a rough palm for the younger man to clasp with a familiar ease. Nice Tamicha, kid. I'm Jiraiya. Hope we can get along. Same. He managed, shaking the hand of the man who would one day teach him so much, he couldn't resist getting a jibe in. Just be thankful I don't have a stick up my ass like the rest of my clan. His grin only grew as they shook. I'd heard it from Sarutobi, but you're really not like most Uchiha, are you? Nope. Naruto bit back a smile, seizing upon the chance to get to better know the man who had once taught him so much. Must be my perverted streak. A lie, technically. He hadn't discovered those urges until just before Sakura's death and shortly thereafter his own, but they'd set in firmly enough to make him wonder sometimes, had the legendary sage really rubbed off on him that badly? Hell. He'd even caught himself peeping a time or two. Then he'd found himself flung into the past and summarily Makoto had stirred up those desires all over again. A gleam shone in the Sinan's eye. Is that so? You have no idea. Good to see you're getting along. Sartobi smiled. You know your assignment, the four of you will leave for the border and make for Sunagakure immediately. I pray you succeed. A wave of the wrist summoned up a quartet of packs and another tossed them at the mothers in even fashion. Naruto wasted absolutely no time in checking the supplies, a cloak, canteens and interestingly enough in his case, a small danto. A glance at the sand dame merely confirmed his suspicions. Consider this your first official mission as a Konoha shinobi. The man replied. Do well, and I can guarantee you the rank of Jonin upon your return. Unless you'd rather join the Anbu. No no no. 
Naruto hastily replied, grimacing at the mention of the Black Ops. That summoned up another memory. Root. He'd have to weed them out in Danzo as well, lest their despicable deeds poison the whole of Konoha as they had during his time. Jonin is just fine. I won't let you down. Unsheathing the blade he marveled at its caliber it almost reminded him of the weapon the legendary White Fang had wielded, only its edge was pure obsidian, blacker than the night itself. Right. Kakashi's old man was still around. Best to address that soon too, before the man ended up committing seppuku. Well, you're certainly eager, I'll give you that. Jire amused, before returning his attention to their leader. You can count on us old man, if worse comes to worst and it won't, Naruto added primly, we'll take care of him. Tsunade finished, earning a frown from Jiraiya. Like he said, we won't let you down. See that you don't. Steepling his fingers, the aging cage leaned forward to address the four of them. I cannot stress how important this is to the war effort, if our allies falter, then so too do we, I needn't remind you that we rely almost entirely upon Tsuna for weapons now, do I? The Tondo you're holding now Naruto, is a gift from their finest blacksmiths. A small smile tugged upwards at his lips. They thought you might need some encouragement to venture out of the village. It is yours to keep. So villages are willing to bribe me to get my attention, eh? Naruto mused, as he gave his new toy a test swing silently filing away this tidbit for later. Not that he'd ever betray Konoha but a weapon like this would come in handy down the road. Madara had been known to the entire world, and thus the appearance of his descendant was naturally not a well-kept secret. It was no small surprise that others would try to seduce him away from his home, but if a paltry weapon was all they had to offer, dismissed. Yes sir. Zunade and Orochimaru saluted, Naruto's lackadaisical stance drawing looks of ire from them both as they departed. No funny business this time, Tzunade warned with a growl almost before they even the exited the ifs. I'm not in the mood for it. Naruto titled his head to the side, the universal way to go huh? But the Kanoichi only flushed ever darker, her eyes bright with anger. Says the girl who got knocked on her ass. The Sinan's face brightened with embarrassment. Jiraiya snickered as they strode out into the street. I've never seen someone get under Tsunade's skin like that. I'll kill both of you. So what do you think of Konoha so far? Dreya asked, ignoring his teammates' vehement decree as they made their way through the market district. I mean, you've already taken the tour, but did anything stand out? Unbidden, Naruto recalled in fond memory. Trying to water walk for the first time, encountering a white-haired stranger who claimed to be the great Jiraiya or some such nonsense. Truly, that was the day the title Rosa Nin had been born. A small smile tugged at the edge of his mouth. Well, the hot springs are nice. Jiraiya looked as though he'd just found a long-lost relative in the Uchiha. My brother. Tsunade groaned. If you two idiots are quite done. Hi hi, Naruto chortled happily. Is there something you'd like to say? An insult perhaps? Or would you like to try and punch me again? We all know how that worked out. The blonde only frowned. The three of us will be taking the lead. She informed him, her gaze strained to Orochimaru, and then Jiraiya. You, will provide provisional support. After all, we'd never hear the end of it from the Uchiha if we let their precious golden boy get hurt. I can handle myself. Right. Her deadpan was barely concealed. You got lucky the other day, punk. Try something like that again, and I'll snap your spine in half. Naruto couldn't help but whistle at that one, sheesh, are you this violent with Dan? Who in the blue hell is that? Oops. Evidently she hadn't met the love of her life yet. Well dot dot that explains a lot. Better now mention Nawaki. Look you little shit, I don't what kind of games you're trying to play or what you've been up to out there in the boonies, but. Naruto lets those jibes roll off him like water off a duck's back, knowing Tsunade's temper made it all too easy. She might have mellowed out by the time they'd met one another, but in that time, he'd almost forgotten just how vindictive she could be. Dealing with Tsunade as Hokage was one thing, tolerating the brazen blonde in her actual youth was ten times worse. On a hunch, it seemed like Tsunade was only telling half the story for being an envoy. 
making herself stand apart from their group of four showed a more severe side that he thought she'd lacked as Hokage, but one glance at her told him there seemed to be something more personal than dealing with a few scouts. Naruto threw out one piece of bait, looking to see if the blonde would bite. His father had been right about that much at least. You do not torment the helpless to assert a position of power. That was reprehensible in so many ways. Those who have power, however, now that was a different story. You wouldn't happen to have something against me, would you, Tzunade-chan? Tzunade's hazel eyes narrowed slightly. There's the bite. Yes, I have something against you. She rounded on him with such ferocity that he almost started. You're new, untested, untrained, and quite frankly I don't trust you. You've already proven your temper, insulted the two of us, and you're a pervert like Jiraiya. So no, I don't think we'll be getting along anytime soon. Before the war, Naruto would have flinched if she'd rounded on him like that. Now, he didn't bat an eyelash. Hear that? He grinned at Jiraiya. She thinks we're a couple of perverts. Ha! Huh. The soon to be Sunin laughed. I am no mere pervert. Nor am I. Naruto returned with a grin. That's right. We are, super perverts. They chorus merrily slinging an arm around each other's shoulders. There was a silence. And then. And then. Let's go, Tzunade. Orochimaru sighed in disgust. Leave the fools to their delusions of grandeur. Hey hey, no need to be hasty. Naruto swung around to block their path in a simple shunshin. I don't really care about the snake bastard but if you hate me this much Tzunade-chan, what do you say to a little wager? You win and I won't speak to you for the rest of my days. A simple contest, that's all. She paused, torn between ridding herself of the insufferable upstart and wondering what her end of the bargain would be. And if you win? Then you have to at least make an effort to be nice. Naruto challenged, knowing it would grate her nerves to do such a thing. You know what I'm talking about, peace and and such. At least to get to know me before you start condemning me for sins that aren't mine. Sound fair? That's it? That's it. Naruto replied, knowing she was a legendary sucker. Shall we settle this, then? His foot struck down at the street, molding the earth into the form he so required. The pavement bent to his will, summoning forth a finely packed table of earth and clay and a pair of tiny hills upon he moved to the nearby table and took his place on the crudely crafted chair beside it, earning a bemused chuckle from Jiraiya and a quiet stare from Orochimaru. Genius that he was, the pale prodigy immediately realized what the Uchiha was up to, and, in his convoluted mind, he thought the Uchiha stood no chance, none at all. Tsunade's strength was legendary, the man was a fool to challenge her. He said as much, and Jiraiya seemed to think so just as well, but he remained silent despite arm wrestle, yup. Unless you're afraid? Naruto taunted. Tell you what, I won't even use my Sharingan just brute strength. No two out of threes or anything. You pin me once and I give up, and vice versa. Tsunade bristled. Oi, oi, is he serious? Kwai. Naruto placed his arm on their impromptu little table and wiggled his fingers. Finally, Tsunade did the same. You do realize you're going to lose, right? Fwa. The Uchiha laughed as he lit a cigar with one hand and tapped his sheathed tado with the other. Some of the other villagers curious as to what exactly the man was capable of doing. We'll see. Ready? Ready. And, go. To her credit, Tzunade actually managed to budge him an inch or two. But Naruto already knew all her tells, just as he knew he had exactly three seconds to force that arm down before she snapped his in half. He was by no means stronger than Tzunade, but a year's worth of war had taught him to be clever. And so, before she could exert the full force of her considerable might, he swung out with his foot breaking her concentration just long enough all without so much as touching her. In that instant her grip instinctively slackened as she prepared to defend herself, and he put his superior speed to use. Slam! Jiraiya and Orochimaru gawped as the back of Tsunade's arm struck the table with enough force to shatter it, leaving the smug Uchiha the proud victor. There was a silence. And then... And then, a glimmer of respect entered her eye. You, bastard. But the words were without their usual rancor. 
How did you know that would work? Naruto waggled his eyebrows. A ninja must look beneath the beneath, Tsunade-chan. And in doing so, he just so happened to catch a streak of red amidst the crowd. Well now, he muttered, creating a shadow clone to pursue. What do we have here? Kashina was dejected. Nearly three days had passed since she'd seen Naruto, after the Uchiha had been whisked away to Kami knew where she'd hear precious little. Apparently he was the talk of the town, having nigh but easily maimed a fellow Uchiha duel of honor. That came as no surprise to her, having seen the man's techniques firsthand she knew he was more than a match for most shinobi. But where had he gone? Surely he hadn't gotten himself thrown out of the village for his actions? If so, she would have at least liked to say goodbye. When asked, Minato had expressed some relief thought that the newcomer had vanished, stating that strangers like him couldn't be trusted during times of war. Kashina was certain there was more to the blonde's sudden animosity than that, but she'd been shooed away before she could press the matter any further. Evidently the last Namakaze was hard at work on a new jutsu and he didn't want anyone to lay eyes upon it until it had been completed. That left her search at a dead end. Almost. Rumor had it that the Uchiha were preening him as a prime candidate for the next clan head, a position Naruto had ardently refused. Not ever useful information, but important nonetheless. Beyond that she hadn't heard anything more about him. Supposedly he was the long-lost descendant of Uchiha Madara, a genius prodigy whose skill was unmatched. She'd tried asking Makoto about it but her friend had been awfully secretive about it, now that she was on a mission to Kami Nu where she had no way of asking her bestie about it any more than she could Naruto himself. So here she was confined to the village walls in no small part thanks to Kumo's kidnapping attempt, left to ponder what had become of her savior. Naturally she'd been drawn by the crowds to the marketplace, where some event or some such had just taken place. Dang it. She'd just missed them. Someone claimed the legendary Tsunade had been beaten in an arm wrestling contest. By some wisecracking Uchiha no less. There was no doubt in her mind who that old be, it must have been Naruto. Darn it she just missed him. Cursing herself for her slowness she kicked at a patch of dirt and started back the way she came, completely unaware of the shadow she picked up. That was when she heard the voice. Oi, Kashina-chan. The young redhead started at the mention of her name, alerted by the bemused, dulcet tones behind that voice. Her body whirled so fast she actually kicked up a small cloud of dust, bright eyes over large and wide as they beheld the one who had spoken. Naruto. You. The Uchiha raised a hand in lazy greeting as he reached her. I was looking for you. Every fiber of her being longed to swarm him, she only barely held herself in check. That was when she noticed his attire. The raven-haired man had outfitted himself for a long journey, a clear sign that he intended to travel great distances, and soon. Oh no. Had he truly been exiled for his actions already? Um, not to press you or anything, but are you? Am I? Please to leave already that bane. Naruto blinked, momentarily taken aback by those words. Gashina felt her face flare fire engine red the back of her neck burning beneath the brand of his inquisitive gaze. There. She'd said it. An awful Paul hung there between them for a long moment, the silence stretching on for what felt like a small eternity. Finally someone broke it. Leave. Naruto exclaimed aghast, his comms are shattering like so much glass. What are you talking about? I've just been assigned a mission, is all. He continued quietly, indicating his pack. It's a big one, too. Real hush hush kinda stuff. Don't know when I'll be back. Oh. Relief flooded her every feature. He wasn't leaving. Well, he was. But at least he'd be coming back. Unless he got killed. But then if he got killed wouldn't he be? Uh uh r. Why is this so hard? Groaning, the redhead buried her face in both hands, trying and failing to stifle the moan that moved past her muffled lips. There's an old saying where I'm from. Naruto grinned. Even when a lion hunts a rabbit, he gives it his all. That's the kind of man I am. So even on a mission like this, I'm prepared to go all out. Hey, were you worried about me? Ass. Gashina couldn't help but smile at his attempt at levity. Despite that, Naruto frowned. I'll be fine. He reassured, 
mistaking her silence for anger. No, it's not that, it's just. Ah, now it all made sense. She still felt indebted to him for saving her three days before. It was only natural that she'd want to learn more about him and, ordinarily, he would have have had a problem with that. The only problem was this was his, well, mother. Granted, he may or may not exist as a Nuzumaki anymore, and his old self had yet to be born, but still. He was going to have to overcome that mindset if he planned to speak with her, let alone form any sort of friendship. Gods, why oh why was this so difficult? She wasn't even his mother anymore. Sorta. Kinda. Maybe. Something like that? I'm nothing special, Tbane. Don't talk like that. Naruto shook his head. You're a hero of the village, after all. Gushina flushed. A a hero? What makes you say that? Because you're holding back the Kuubai, preventing him from escaping. Naruto's deadpan was barely concealed. Isn't that obvious? Why should anyone mistreat you for your sacrifice? I certainly won't. If you didn't take him into your own body, this entire village might not even exist anymore. In my eyes, that makes you a hero. Reaching down for her, he cupped her chin in hand, forcing the young Kanoichi to look him square in the eye. No matter what anyone says, that's where you are. You, Uzumaki Kashina, are a hero. There was a silence. Slowly her face began to flush, not scarlet as before, but a rosy hue. Almost as if she'd been tickled pink. Why you, you're really trying to make me fall for you, aren't ya? Eh? The kiss, when it came, was completely and totally unexpected. One moment he'd been standing there, staring down at the girl who without his continued interference might one day be his mother. The next, she stood on the tips of her toes and pressed her lips against his whiskered cheek. It was a fleeting, tantalizing touch, innocent and naive, and it had him completely spelled. Huh. So surprised was the shadow clone that it actually dispelled on contact, evaporating less than an instant after Gushina's lips touched his cheek. The young vixen left behind was baffled blinking in surprise as she realized the object of her affections had just vanished in a plume of smoke. She kissed a cage bunch in. But even so, she had actually, completely, definitely, kissed, him. Oh dear. The actual Naruto blinked as the memories came back to him at the gate. Well, that was certainly, interesting. A small, slightly dismayed smile leapt to his lips. He'd been kissed killest by his own mother and to make matters worse he'd actually enjoyed it him uzumaki uchiha naruto had enjoyed being kissed by his mother the very thought was as disturbing as it was erotic in so many ways he barely fought down the urge to send another clone after his will be parent are you that excited kid jiraiya asked aloud mistaking the uchiha's smile for something else something like that yeah it seems you're having fun, partner. Naruto opened his eyes and immediately bristled in recognize, he knew the voice, recognized it now. It was his own, his dark side speaking to him for the first time since the falls of truth. He hadn't heard him for ages now, with Gurumaj done he simply hadn't expected to, either. To listen to it again, hear it speak to him again. Raw shivers shot up and down his spine. You? I, it's me. He experienced a sudden flash of his darker half with its dark red eyes and bleak smile. Missed you too. You so new the bitch. Get the hell out of my relax, partner. Yami Naruto soothed, spreading his hands in a calming gesture. I'm not here to cause trouble, if anything, I'm here to congratulate you. Bedding two women at once. Hot damn. That takes some doing, even without my help. Didn't know you had it in you. For the record. I've only betted one. The other, oi. Don't put ideas like that in my head. Whatever you say, boss. A devilish laugh rebounded through the halls that were his mind, dying away almost immediately thereafter. I look forward to your future exploits. Blissfully unaware of the havoc raging inside the ex blonde's head, Tzunid gave the order to open the gates. By the grace of Kami Naruto managed to wrest his attention away from the dilemma and return it unto those great mahogany doors as they ground themselves open. Kukaku, Orochimaru murmured morosely. This should be interesting. Naruto frowned. 
cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. The Uchiha murmured a bleak and quiet quote to himself as he strode out of Konoha for what felt like the first time dot dot in a very long time. I will fear no evil for I am the shadow. The heavens shall tremble. You will rise nevermore. Where did that come from? Juat an old saying of mine. Naruto's eyes gleamed menacingly. Says the good get their just rewards and the evil, well, they get their just deserts. For him, Orochimaru couldn't die fast enough.